What's up, brother? This is your brother, G World 7 underscore D. Now, here's a... Now, right now, I have this book right here called A Narrative of the Expedition of Hernando de Soto in Florida. But this that's not what I want, want to talk about. I have an actual picture in another book. It's called The History of Florida that shows you Hernando de Soto, and it shows him as a 20 more. All right? It shows him as a Negro. <clears throat> so... He was either mixed black or light skinned black. And before I mentioned in my video on Hernando de Soto, now he was the one who helped destroy the the Dinka Inca Empire here in the Americas over in Peru or Heru. So the Soto, like I said, did not look like this. This is like I said, it's a whitewash. He was what you call a dirty moor, a twenty moor. Alright. And then he had some blackamores with him, obviously, in his expedition. Um, the Soto, the Soto, helped conquer and destroy, like I said, the Black Inca Dinka Empire. Now, when you look, I've often, often mentioned how there's various different types of black people that were over here. It wasn't just one type. There was very different types. I talked about right there, I just mentioned right there those dirty moors, the twenty, those twenty slash black moors, so the, those particular dirty moors who came over here, as well as the the Inca Dinka Negroes that was already over here, and then you had the Aztecs who came in here from afar, because the Aztecs built on top of other black civilizations before them, but remember Montezuma stated that his people were not from this land; they were from a land from the other side of the uh, open sea the river <clears throat> so they migrated over here so that verifies what i talked about how our very different black folks had the concept of using ships to sail around the world so your negro historians would just tell you that you come from africa on a slave ship when blacks had the navigational skills to sail globally so when you, lots of times in ancient times, they used to trade amongst each other. So sometimes they'll take in a wife from one land, bring them to this land, or a wife, they'll take a wife from this land, go to another land. That's why sometimes your genes may be spread out all over the place. Because there was also, there was so much trading going on amongst the Americans who trading with Africa. The people of Asia was trading with the people in Americas too, out out on the West Coast. And it wasn't the East Coast was trading more with Africa, but <clears throat> I digress. Also, I wanted to show you this, which I had shown in this book before. I want to go to page 62 of this book. Um, here you have, when the soda went to Florida, you had some um, Negroes in the Southeast. All right, so when they came here, they knew how the people looked like. They knew how melanated the people who they were dealing with in Europe. And he had the melanated Negroes here. And these are the Indians here. And this was the Tecumseh. But I'm going to go further over. And I want to show this picture, which I've shown before. <clears throat> of the Chippewas. Now, I've shown this picture before numerous of times. All right. Now, you see the colors of red, white, and blue. Those are colors of the American flag. And I showed you before with the X and the star <clears throat> and everything. And how that originated with the aboriginal blacks. And how they took those stars and those X's. And that X. Combined it and you had a confederate flag. <laughs> And with the original Indian tribe names in there with the Battle Canyon. With this red, white, and blue color. You see the feathers right here. Red, white, and blue. You see the feathers right here. The Negro already had this. You see this Negro right here. This is obviously a, a Negro. All right? A black man. All right? And here's the, the Negro with the combed out afro. This is something that's worn by our people here in America, but then you also had some brothers and sisters in the Pacific Islands who was wearing this type of hairstyle. The Africans was basically imitating what we were doing here. There wasn't no other way around. They were imitating us. So what you have, these Aboriginal Negroes, and this is the Chippewa, 
based in Canada and in the Midwest region mostly. These Chippewa Negroes based here in Americas, all right? And like I said, the, the combed out afro. And I obviously use the pick because when you look at a lot of these little, when they come up with a lot of findings in these tombs and stuff, you see some type, you always, they come up with a type of pick that's like you're picking like a, for an afro. But these dumbass white racist ass white scholars won't come out flat out and tell you that. But a lot of times they come up with the, the stuff that they use for their hair, their adornment. It was like a pick for an afro. <laughs> I'm kidding you not, man. That's what it was. All right. So I'm going to go and turn to another page because I want to highlight something real quick. I want to highlight something because this is very, very, very important. And I showed you the X before. And I showed you Montezuma before. And I mentioned this before, but look at the X in the background. See the X in the background, like I said before? And the structure. And the structure back here. Look at that. And a little needle up there. This is sort of like what you see at the... Um, I want to say Washington, in Washington, D.C., with the Capitol building and stuff. You see this type of same structure. In every state, you see this type of structure with the state Capitol building. And that's due because that design that they have now, each, each one of these state Capitol buildings in the federal building was stolen from the aboriginal blacks that were here. Remember, the Aztecs came here from Atlanta far, built on top of the black civilizations here. And then you had, and then you had foreigners who came to attack and bring them down. I, I mentioned DeSoto; he had brought down the Inca Empire. All right. For a second, I thought I was going to say Aztec knows the Inca Empire, and the Inca slash Dinka were the a Negro Empire over in Peru slash Peru. So you had the Aboriginal blacks there. They obviously had foreign blacks who came from afar. Then you had some European blacks who were over here. So it was very different blacks and Asian blacks who migrated here to the Americas. So there was nothing new about them trading and interacting with one another. So America wasn't the new world. It is the old world. So when you hear Negro scholars, historians keep pushing that agenda, saying America is the new world, that's a lie. It's not the new world, it's old. Just like other places, it's old. But unfortunately, the, the Negro, these Negro stories, which they so much, they have so much self-hate that they want to basically try to, it, it's hard for them to phantom that Negroes were here way beyond the date and has great civilizations way beyond the date that has been generally given for people who have been over here in the Americas. That it goes way beyond that little fictional date of 10,000, 12,000 B.C. when people was over here having civilization much older than that. Remember that I said before that America was a land of gold and riches. And a lot of individuals came over here seeking gold and riches. They went to the Caribbean, as in DeSoto did. They went, then he, then he ended up going to Florida, I'll say Louisiana and Alabama to that southern region. So he seen the Aboriginal black tribes, encountered them. Obviously, he noticed them because when he went back, because he, because he himself was a dirty Moor, a Twani Moor, and he seen black Moors that looked same like the skin complexion, like these quote copper colored Negroes who had a reddish brown skin complexion, or some of them were chocolate but a reddish-brown skin complexion. That's your so-called red Indian. Not no, quote, quote so-called uh, Siberian mongoloid person. Because they were paler complexion. They were pale skin. They were not of a darker hue. They would not survive being around half-naked or fully naked in those climates, so they had to wear drapes over them to protect them from the sun because they didn't have the skin to uh, they didn't have the skin to absorb the UV rays. That was for darker skinned people. So those are Negroes within that region. So the Soto seen those Negroes, and he was a Negro himself, but he was a Twani Moor. So. That was a 20 more coming to attack an aboriginal 
black civilization that was already here. So you had one group of Negro blacks coming over to attack another group of Negro blacks. These are foreign blacks, all right? So you have foreigners attacking the original people here. 20 dirty moors slash black moors coming to attack aboriginal Negroes here. I'm not making this stuff up, man. This is, <laughs> this is what it is. So when you're goofy, stupid, ignorant, outdated Negro stories tell you that America's a new world, and we just came over during the slave ship, and ignoring the fact that people sailed around the world, traveled around the world, traversed, traversed around the world, traded with each other for thousands of years, the West Coast blacks traded with black people in Asia, the East Coast blacks traded with black people in Africa, so they knew each other. Took each other's wives. Like I said, your genes are being spread all over the load of place because they took each other's wives into different regions. But you're still indigenous to this land and they traded ideas. So that's why you find these great Miami structures here in America, over in Asia, over in Africa and Europe. A lot of them have a similarity because that knowledge the technology and that ideology was spread across the globe. All this stuff, this isolation theory nonsense, it doesn't make no sense. That's what we get from a lot of these racist-ass anthropologists, archaeologists. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. When they're doing that to promote and push a racist agenda, they don't want you to know about the black global empires. And, and sad to say, we did war amongst each other. A lot of people don't want to hear that. That's the point that you don't want to hear. The black empires deal war amongst each other globally. They fought amongst each other in their homeland and they fought amongst each other globally. Because like I said before, these were foreign blacks coming over here and conquering aboriginal blacks. See, these were the Negroes attacking other Negroes. But see, white historians will make these people as white. No, they weren't white. So that goes into questioning also a lot of the fact when you hear Europe, remember King Charles V, Charles V was not only the, um, the Holy Roman Emperor, but he was also King of Australia and, uh, Austria, excuse me, in Spain. And that was a straight up Negro, man. So you had those European Negro. Remember, he was also the first European king of the Inca Empire. Inca Empire has indigenous black kings that were here in America, aboriginal blacks. And he was a black Moorish European or black European of the Holy Roman Empire. The first European to rule. And it's obvious that Negro was black. And then the Inca rulers were black. So you had a conflict between two different melanated black groups. A lot of stuff that when you start studying even more, you're not going to like what you hear. You had a lot of niggas who sold you out, and they're still doing that today. Because it's in their bloodline. I'm going to try to find that picture, because I showed it in one of my older videos of Hernando de Soto. I might have mentioned... Aztec with him, but it was Inca, all right, and, um, but this stuff happened constantly, you were having Negroes warm amongst each other globally, and within the continent, of each continent, so that was a big downfall to our history, but you had these traitorous Negroes from afar who helped destroy a lot of civilizations here, obviously with the help of inside help of traders that were here. So all this is like lust and greed for power. You had other different so-called tribes who weren't part of the empire who may have to pay a tax, whatever, to the people who ruled the mighty empire. And they wanted to take them down. So they was willing to work with outsiders to take them down. And once you, like I said, study, start studying stuff, you can basically put the pieces together. You can put things together and see that um, there was a lot of dirty Negroes out there, man. 
along with Negroes who wasn't who was trying to live their life the right way and continue to build the empire and the homeland, but you had a lot of dirty Negroes too, man. And these white folks trying to write themselves an issue they had nothing to do with. <laughs> All right, brothers and sisters, peace and love.